So welcome back to the channel, my name is Max and today I wanted to share with you what my programming workflow is and how it might help you for your next programming project. So yeah, first of all, I didn't crack the code of the perfect programming workflow. I know that my method can be improved and should be improved, but yeah, I still wanted to share with you the key ideas that I use in order to be structured when starting a new project, which is, in my opinion, key to have a successful program. So let's begin with this video. If you found it helpful, all I ask is to leave a little like under this video and maybe also subscribe to the channel because like you can see only 6% of you are actually subscribed to the channel and it will really help me out and I would really appreciate it. Let's go. So on this video I will not concentrate on how do I find project ideas because that will be for another video but more on what do I do once I found a cool project idea. So to give you guys a personal example lately I've been wanting to create an audio habit tracker which is basically a program where you can tell uh, Siri or your Google Home which habit that you did and it will automatically update a database somewhere in the cloud and then you can access it via a web page and everything. So that's basically the idea that I have and I will use this example throughout the video to give you guys some real examples of what I do every single time so it can maybe help you a little bit more. Also I divided this video in four steps that you can reproduce afterwards and I think it will be easier to follow also throughout the video. So yeah let's start with step one. So Step one, research. So when I know what I want to do, I start writing down ideas on my iPad, but you can use a notebook or whatever, you get the idea. I also create a Notion page for my project to put some links and other important stuff that we will talk about later in this video. So what I do is I go on my iPad and I write a higher level of the app. So I know that for my program, I want to capture what the user is saying via the Google Home. So what I do is I go on Google and I start searching some programs or technologies that actually make me achieve that kind of stuff. So for this particular task, I'm going to use Dialogflow, but let's say I had no idea how to use this kind of technology, which not so long ago was actually the case. So what I do is I just go on Google and start typing the problem that I try to solve. So little tip here, don't try to reinvent the wheel, use what's already out there and try to use the most popular technologies. I use the most popular technologies for a couple reasons. The first reason is that they work well. The second reason is that you actually get some experience in a technology that companies are looking for. And the third reason is it's just way more easier. Basically what I mean by that is keep it simple and you will thank yourself later for that. Trust me, made a mistake more than once and you really hate yourself when that happens. So when I found the technology, what I do is I write it down and I put a reference, I get a repo, a link on my Notion page. You know, I do that for every single technology or feature that I need. I know it takes some time in the beginning, but it actually saves you a lot of time afterwards when you are actually starting to code. And when all that is done, we can start Step two, set up the environment. When I finally have an idea of what I'm gonna do, I go to GitHub and create a repository for the project. After that, I clone it on my computer and start messing with it. And I do this so I can constantly push my code to my GitHub profile and keep things clean. Also, I do this because GitHub keeps track of how active you are and how often you push code on their platform, which is something that companies are always looking at when they want to see if you are an experienced programmer or not. So back to my folder on my computer, for the project that I want to make, I need to create a React application. So I create one with the specific commands. Since I will need Dialogflow for this project, I also create a new Dialogflow agent on their platform. I also create a server folder that will basically receive a webhook, which is basically an HTTP request from Dialogflow and the server will process it and then give it to the front end. After that, I install some libraries, you know, the basic stuff when you're starting a new project. And the one key thing that I want you to see is that I didn't code anything yet. I'm just structuring everything before I start coding. After that, I commit everything on GitHub and voila, step two is done. And now we can do step three, which is step three, time management. So you remember that Notion page that we created earlier? Well, what I like to do is create a board view inside that page and start writing different tasks that I need to do. Probably like most of you guys, I only do those projects part-time, after work, school and everything else. So I don't always remember what I had to do next or what my thoughts were right before I finished coding last time. So I start writing the different tasks that I need to do for the project and give them a priority. So next time I come back, I know what I was working on and what needs to be done next. Oh, and to remember what my thoughts were 
about a certain task, I go inside that task and I just start writing some random stuff about it. So next time I can look at it and almost remember what I did. If you want to go fancy, you could even create a branch for every single task on GitHub, but yeah, making sure that everything is clean and functional before merging everything on the main branch. But yeah, those are best practices and I don't always follow them, especially for smaller projects. So yeah, do what I say, not what I do. There you go. <laughs> and finally, when we've done step one, step two and step three, we can start step four which is the most fun part, coding. So those are the things that I do every single time before I start a new coding project. I know it's, it could be better and improved in so many ways, but hey, it works for me and I hope it could help you for your next project. If you found this video helpful, all I ask is to leave a like on this video and maybe let me know in the comments. I always reply to every single person that takes the time to ask a question, leave a feedback or anything. I really appreciate it, so yeah go for it. Also, subscribe to the channel, join the gang, and I will see you in the next video. See you. Thank you very much.